Last week, we sailed into the port of Corinto, Nicaragua, where we said goodbye to our crew member Emily and explored the mangroves. And we're on our way south down some little roadstead anchorage tonight off the coast of Nicaragua as we make our way to San Juan del Sur. And it's a pretty nice sail so far today. We've slowed down a little now. Nice close hauled sail. Not much going on out here. The coastline of Nicaragua back here, just volcanoes all across. Got a reef in the main. We came out with a reef this morning in case the winds picked up. Some of the forecasts showed it a bit stronger the further south we get. So rather be prepared, especially since we left before the sun was up. And we've got a full Genoa out right now. And there goes a little, we had to turn. There's a bird. Leave that, leave the lower alone. Don't you come back. Go away, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. Who are you and what are you? Go get your own tucker. What are you? Are you a petrel? There he goes, he's diving down. It's not a fish. It's my lure. Leave it alone. Dolphins coming along for the ride. We're not heading exactly the direction we want to be. Kind of want to be going that way. So, no, we're actually we're only about like 30 or 40 degrees off right now. Oh, these dolphins are pretty sweet though. It's quite clear out here. Nice day. Always a pleasure when you get the dolphins with you. Despite having strong winds forecast, we actually had some really nice sailing conditions. 10 to 15 knots of breeze, sailing close hauled, we were making great time for the first part of the day. been a long, relatively slow day. Got some good sailing in. We sailed close hold for a while and had a good 15 knots of wind. Slowly died and just in the last half hour here we turned the motor back on so we can get into the anchorage before the sun goes down, which is going to happen in about half an hour here. So we're almost there, just a couple miles out. Might be a bit of a rolly night, but we'll be able to get some sleep and then continue on south tomorrow. We just set the anchor. We do that by locking off the windlass where it's at and backing on it, or if we're under sail, back winding the sails and let it pull tight. I feel the chain when we do that to make sure it doesn't feel like the anchor's skipping on the bottom at all. Make sure it's not rumbly, which usually means rocks. Now that we have it set, we're going to put the snubber on. This is our snubber here. A little chain hook. And then we have eight strand. And it's quite a long snubber. So what this does, it takes the load off the windlass, so we're not pulling on the windlass. And it also gives it a bit of stretch because most of our road, the first 250 feet, are chain. There's no give on it, so it can shock load really easily. But this eight strand is nice and stretchy, 
So it gives it a much more gentle tug when we pull on the anchor tight. And put it on. we have a second one too, right? We also have a second one. We have a shorter one that's just a section of eight strand line. And that one we use either when we're all the way out on our road, just to tie off and take the pressure off the windlass. Or if we're in a place where there's kind of like funky currents, when the boat kind of, the current is against the wind, the boat sits right over the anchor sometimes, and this will slip off. But we tie a rolling hitch on the chain and that works really well. So we're anchored out here on what's called a roadstead anchorage. There's no protection, it's not a cove or anything of that. It's basically just pulled in here and we're, I don't know, like a quarter mile or whatever off the beach here. There's a bunch of surfers there. One of the reasons we're going to use that larger snubber here too is because we've got a lot more swell, not because it's not protected. And the swell's where you can get a lot more of that shock loading and that surge on there as well. It's a very calm swell right now. Uh, the small snubber we'll use a lot when it's really flat calm out and you don't really need much protection on the shock loading. We're going to put this bigger one on. It'll also give us a lot more uh, length. We're about five to one right now, probably a little over five to one on our ratio. Uh, so the depth here is about 10 meters where we dropped the anchor. We've got about 50 meters out. Once we put this out, that'll give us like what another, another like three six, to five to six, I five think. to six meters. I think so. Yeah. Decent amount. This is just going to be a nice little anchorage for the night. We thought we'd split this one up. It was like a yeah, 50 mile something day here. That's what we got going early. And I think tomorrow we're just going to do like an even shorter one, maybe 25, something like that miles, which means we don't have to get up super early. How good's that? Although we'll miss the sunrise. Sunrises and sunsets are the best part of this. Solamente pescan durante la noche o durante el día. Okay. Es mejor en la noche. En veces sí, sí, más, casi más de noche que pescamos acá. Okay. Que usan un red o piola. Cuerdas. Ah, okay, sí. The next day, we woke up to some local fishermen visiting us as they clean their night's catch. Mostly Wachanango, or Red Snapper. Gracias. We're surrounded by birds. <laughs> we are. Local fishermen came to visit us and say hello this morning and gave us some bait fish, so we can try that out on the lures today. While we didn't have any luck with the bait fish, we did have some luck with our lures. After a bit of a fight, we pulled in a good sized jack, hauling him in with the gaff hook, and then spiking him, cutting his gills, and looping a line through to hang him off the back until it was a bit calmer to fillet him. As we approached our anchorage for the night, a few squalls passed over, giving us some rain and gusty wind, as well as a beautiful sunset as we came in and dropped the anchor in another roadstead anchorage for the night. We finally found those winds that have been forecast. The further south we get, they actually showed up. Give you a little look-see. Uh, it's a pretty, uh, yeah, we're used to it, but it's an uncomfortable ride today. Thankfully a short one, but uh, it's gonna take us a little while to get there. We've got a reef in the main and just a staysail out right now. 27 knots of wind. So it's windy? A bit windy, got the staysail out, reef main. Now we're doing just under six knots of boat speed with 26 knots of wind. We're trying to keep it under like around 20 degrees heel, I guess. But yeah. This is the water right here. A little bit of a heel going on. So it's a little difficult for us to film when it's like this. Much as we'd love to have some great sailing footage of us feeding into the, the weather here. Uh, trying to keep the camera Whoa. dry. <laughs> Bloody hell. That was perfect timing, that's the wettest one in a while. Well, taking on quite a bit of water over the bow today and that's what's slowing us down. We kind of hobby horse it a bit, we're beating real hard into the uh, into this. And it's not, not swell, it's just wind waves. So some quite large wind waves being kicked up. I mean, we're only a few miles offshore here, we're not too far off at all. We've got some real big wind waves kicked up by these uh, 25 plus knots of wind. 
and every time we plow into one of those biggies it just kind of stops us still and uh, we'll take on some water so it's been a bit of a wet ride up there in the cockpit I'm trying to make a bit of water down here which is probably what you can hear in the background As we made our way into southern Nicaragua, we started to feel the effects of what are called the Papagayo winds. These are a kind of gap wind that blow when strong winds from the Caribbean funnel over low stretches of land across to the Pacific. They are especially pronounced in southern Nicaragua and northern Costa Rica, and they are known for kicking up quite a bit of wind chop. Although it was a tough beat sailing southeast into the east winds down the Nicaraguan coast, we were happy to have the company of some more beautiful dolphins, who are having a good old time riding our bow waves. Well, we're here, San Juan del Sur, got in yesterday evening. We didn't go into the port captain yesterday, it was kind of evening when we arrived. It would have been borderline them closing, plus it was crazy windy which it still is, blowing that 25 knots we had sailing in here. We have the dinghy in the water now. Ty did an awesome job putting that together. Despite all the wind, now time for the uh, challenging row to shore. It's a long row to shore here in San Juan del Sur because there's so many moored pongas, lanchas, fishing, charter type boats we have to anchor way out. So it's a long row and the wind is going to make it even more challenging. Uh-oh. Rowers on strike. No, I'm being aerodynamic. This way we get into shore, like under the under the wind. I think if you go like that, you're gonna end up out to sea. Well, you row, I'll lay. Oh. We had wind like 30 knots yesterday, so uh, and I think it's still well in the 20s today. It'll be an interesting row in. Let's try, go. try and go between the gusts. All the way over. Way the heck over in there. A long ways to go. We just stopped in here at this hotel that's right on the beach in San Juan del Sur. We found last time it has the best Wi-Fi, good for uploading videos. Got our interneting done. Now we'll go check out town. Mm -hmm. Feels like it might be a bit different than when we were here last. A bit of life might have come back to town even though the situation hasn't really improved here in Nicaragua. But things have settled down. It sounds like tourists have come back. This past year in Nicaragua, there has been quite a bit of political unrest, which significantly disrupted tourism and other parts of the economy and infrastructure during the middle of last year. So really nice dock they've got here. They get a decent amount of cruise ships in here around this time. There was one here yesterday for the day. And they've got a temporary barge right now where they offload uh, passengers from the little shuttles that come in. And I think here it sounds like they need to do some dredging and it's not deep enough. But it's a really nice dock here. It's a great spot to pull up the dinghy. We don't have to worry about landing on the beach through the surf. And there's security here. There's security guards and militaries here. Great little dinghy parking spot. And it's pretty close to everything here as well. The port captain's office is uh, where? Just kind of around the corner from all this, walk up the road and the port captain, immigration are right there. And from here, we basically walk right into downtown area. Right into downtown on the beach. Restaurants, 
all the good touristy stuff. Where there's always a couple of soccer games going on on the beach. Well, the amount of time we've been here, we have still never made it up to this statue up here. Tourism has definitely started to come back here. When sure. we were here last time, buses couldn't get anywhere on the road, so they were really suffering even just from local tourism. Popular place to come on a weekend. Yeah. One of the boats that washed ashore and did not get dragged back out after the hurricane that came across from the Caribbean or the Caribbean Sea, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And came across a couple of years ago now, 2016, I think. Came across and sunk a lot of boats out here and washed a bunch up. This is one of them. And Hillary was noting earlier that it looks very similar to Varuna, which is kind of a not a good thought, but she's right. It's the Pearson. Oh. So the serial number here, I forget exactly how to read them, but basically the PEA here is, stands for Pearson, that's their identifier. Uh, I know the last number's there, it looks like it's a 77, which is the year. The M is a month, which could be March, I forget um, what the, the, the month abbreviations were. And then there's a serial number in here as well. Yeah, I'm surprised how this is relatively not filled with rubbish. Best food ever here in Nicaragua. We love it. Grilled meat, plantains, the sweet grilled plantains, and also the crispy fried, like potato chip plantains, gallo pinto, which is rice and beans, salad. Delicious, delicious, such good food. We love it. It's super cheap. It's like four bucks for a huge plate of food. There's some long shadows. Mm -hmm. Very long shadows, long shadows, long shadows. As we prepared to leave San Juan del Sur, we walked up to the local supermarket to stock up on provisions. Mostly long lasting vegetables and a few dry goods. And a lot of butter, which we had a special plan for. After checking out, we loaded all our goods into our backpack for the walk back to the boat. It's a nice windy day outside today and we're going to attempt our first time at trying to can up some butter. So we haven't done this before, we've watched a few things on how to do it. Uh, butter is one of the things that has been very difficult to find all throughout Mexico and Central America. Uh, now it is something we can find in larger towns, but in any of the small little villages, it's pretty rare indeed. Mostly it's margarine. Got a nice 20, 25 knots going out here today, and uh, it's a good day to be inside doing this instead of rowing the dinghy. So down here, what we've got is 2.3 kilos of butter. Now that's just for breakfast tomorrow morning. Uh, we're gonna have to do some more, because that's just for our pancake recipe. And, just kidding. Now, if our calculations are right, we're hoping this will give us eight uh, pint cans, which is what fits in our pressure canner. Uh, we're going to melt this down, we're going to skim some foam off it, we're going to put them in our jars, which are over here, and then we're going to put them in the pressure canner, 
I think we're gonna do like a 60 minute run in the pressure canner. Well, in our pressure canner here, we just have some water heating up. These are our lids that we've just got on a little bit of a warm water or a hot water here. Right over here, there's our melted butter. And we're gonna pour that into our jars. That's the uh, foam that we skimmed off the top. Well, if all goes to plan, it's now just a matter of putting that melted butter into these jars and then pressure canning it for about 60 minutes. All right, these guys have been in the pressure canner for 60 minutes, pulling them out and letting them cool down. It's like a magic potion. All right, butter is all canned up, stored in jars, we can store it in the cupboard. We don't have to refrigerate it. We're super happy, super excited about it only thing we would have done differently is we weren't on the boat the whole time they were cooling and while they cool you kind of need to shake the jars every now and then to get the milk solids to kind of reincorporate back into the butter and some of them they've settled out in the bottom a little bit because we left the boat last night but i think they'll still be great they look awesome really excited <laughs> Busy. There's a like a graduation or something commencement ceremony been going on the last few days different grades. Mm -hmm. And we've got a dredge going on out here. And we're headed to Port Captain's office. We're gonna go get our international zarpe to leave Nicaragua head to Costa Rica. Here in San Juan del Sur, they were performing quite the interesting dredging operation with just a tractor shovel, a barge, and a towboat. Checkout hasn't gone quite as smoothly as we hoped. When we arrived in Corinto, they didn't stamp our passports. They just gave us like a little tourist card with a stamp on it. I think that might be their procedure for all the cruise ships they get in there. And apparently they never put in the system that we arrived. So it took them a while at immigration to get that processed. And while all that was going on, I ran over to the port captain's office to see when they were open till. They said they'd be open, but apparently the boss left, so that means we can't get our Zarpe, which is our departure document. They have told us they will come out to the boat in the morning to do that for us. We'll see if that happens. Well, we found a propane pill, still place. They actually uh, took a day or so to fill it. They take it into Rebus, which is a town like 40 days or so from here. But it's interesting, it's, most of all the propane places are a long way out of town for safety reasons, but this one's right in the heart of town, in someone's little house. Well, it's not the big tank that they fill it with, well, though. It's it's just but it's a lot, of, a lot of individual propane tanks. Yeah, I guess it's true. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. Until next time, adios. Oh wait, this isn't my good side. Oh, there you go. Is this my distinguished look? How do I do distinguished? No, I don't know how to do- That looks confused. I don't know how to do distinguished. <laughs>